Good evening. The members of Faith Lutheran Church welcome you to the New Year's Eve worship service from the Faith Ministry Center Sanctuary. Leading the liturgy this evening is Reverend Adam Bridgman. Preaching this New Year's Eve is Reverend Aaron Rosenau. You can download a PDF version of the worship folder at www.faithfoxvalley.org. At the Watch and Listen tab, choose All Downloads. Then choose Worship Downloads. When you find the worship folder for Faith Ministry Center, click on the square with the cloud. We join the service already in progress. Well, good evening, everyone. I want to welcome everybody here for our New Year's Eve service that are here in person and those of us, those of you joining us uh, via live stream um, as we say goodbye to the year 2021, 2020, 2021, probably not going to be two of our favorite years in history, I'm guessing. That's okay, though, because uh, God still takes care of us and gives us a lot more to look forward to in the in the years coming, and we just thank him and trust him to bring us into the new year with his love and mercy, which he continues to do no matter what we face every day on, an, uh, on earth on a daily basis. And uh, one of the texts for tonight is Jesus talking about worry and uh, how futile it is, but uh, a lot of us have that propensity, yours truly being one of them, to, to worry about things as a... As a uh, Sometimes as a way to solve things. Have you ever heard that people that, uh, well, I can stop something from happening to me if I worry about it. If I don't, it'll sneak up on me. I'm one of those guys. But Jesus is going to talk about worrying, and uh, Pastor Aaron will have a message for us. For the, uh, he mentioned to me he will mention worry in his message, so uh, we'll look forward to that. As we look forward to 2022, as you are able, will you please rise for our invocation? As we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. The day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness, and make your light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Our opening hymn this evening is from Lutheran Service Book 881, Christ Mighty Savior. Christ Mighty Savior, light of all creation, you make the daytime radiant with the sunlight, and to the night give glittering adornment, stars in the heavens.
Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death, and they are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to condemn our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. God knows our sins as if they were spread out before him, even the secret ones. You have set our iniquities before you our secret sins in the light of your presence. Though God knows about each of our sins, he still loves us and wants to forgive us. God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we reflect on this prayer of Moses, a sharp contrast is drawn between our frail nature and the eternal nature of God. Our time on earth is limited, and we are to use it wisely with God's kingdom in mind. Let us pause for a moment and consider anything that might limit us from gaining a heart of wisdom. Merciful God, we confess that we are children. Children of God, fear not. Our loving Father has done great things for us. Through the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we are his redeemed children and declared righteous. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Our next hymn comes from Lutheran Service Book 387. Joy to the world, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room.
Heavenly Father, as we gather for worship on this last day of the year, we thank you for the joy of this season and for all your blessings throughout our lives, especially the glory of your righteousness and the wonder of your extravagant love. Praise Gracious Lord, Lord, we praise you for your presence, for blessing us through word and sacraments, and for strengthening our faith in Christ, our newborn King. Be with us now and as the year draws to a close, and help us to remain watchful for your second coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our New Testament lesson for this evening comes from James, the fourth chapter. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not, not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn comes from Lutheran Service Book 728. How firm a foundation. How firm a foundation. As you are able, will you rise for the reading of our gospel, which comes from Luke, the 12th chapter. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, 
Not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Our next hymn comes from Lutheran Service Book 895. Now thank we all our God. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. I don't think anyone can argue that COVID-19 has not changed the world in a lot of ways. The COVID pandemic has had a detrimental impact on us individually and as a society, no doubt. Some have lost loved ones to the virus. Others have lost relationships over the virus and politics all surrounding it. I know at least one person who over a year ago had COVID-19, lost her sense of smell, and even today still has almost no ability to smell anything. It's had a devastating impact on many. On the other side, however, there is at least one positive impact of COVID-19 over the last 18 plus months. And it's tied to this. Who could have possibly foreseen on December 31st, 2019, what we would go through just a few months later and what we would still be talking about and going through now? I mean, who would have seen almost everything shutting down, all of us going into isolation, and now over a year and a half later, still having this prominently on our minds and in the news. It has always been the reality of the world that God has set up for us that we cannot see into the future. I mean, I might try to predict what's going to happen. 
I might speculate on what my wife is going to do in response to something I say. A meteorologist may forecast the weather based on certain patterns that are repeated. But then we're still surprised, aren't we? Meteorologists might forecast 12-inch snowstorm and blizzard conditions, and then we have a two-inch dud of a storm. (laughs) What I thought my wife would say ends up sometimes being 180 degrees different than what she actually says. Kirk Cousins thought that he would be playing against the Packers on Sunday night. You know, he just tested positive for COVID, so he's out. And who even knows who the backup for the Vikings is anyway? I don't know. The point is, no one knows. We might want to predict the future, but we can't. Never could. I mean, there have been a few people in the history of the world who have been employed by God to prophesy about the future. They were prophets. Part of what they did was predict the future. A lot of what they did was actually to speak the word of God in their present condition. But then they also communicated God's promises and God's warnings for the future. But even those men who were prophets didn't always see exactly what was going to happen. God gave them more than what they even knew or understood they were saying. Most of the time, our future is murky and unknown. We have no idea what is going to happen the next day, much less the next year. So the words of James in the New Testament are as timely today as they were in the first century. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we'll go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist, James says. A mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes, James says. And then he says, all such boasting is evil. Wow. Now, we could fall off the rails on the other side, right? And and that we never make any plans whatsoever. Just go willy-nilly through life, aimless, foolish. Jesus says something about this in Luke 14. He says, a builder calculates the cost before he builds a tower. A king assesses the risk before he goes off to war. It's not wrong to make plans or to set goals, but that planning should always be done in humility, understanding that a million different things can come up between now and when our goals, our plans are accomplished that could totally alter the game plan. And all those things fully unknown and unforeseen. Never know what's coming. Growing up in Indiana, I don't know if you had the same expression, but the expression was always something like, I'll see you next week, God willing, and the creek don't rise. (laughs) Or crick, depending on where you're from, right? (laughs) I think this is what COVID has forced us to remember. Cautiously pushing open a door that was titled, very big, 2022. 
they're all hiding behind the corner because, you know, no one knows exactly what's going to come shooting out of that door as soon as it's open, right? Nobody knows what's going to be unleashed when you open the door 2022. What joys await us? What challenges are before us? God only knows. And that really is the point tonight. That's it. It's the only point I have. God only knows. But really, that has two parts. Number one, we have to remain humble as we step into the future. There's no place for arrogance or empty planning. Only God knows. The second thing is, we need not fear what is coming. Because God knows. And this was Jesus' point in the gospel from Luke 12. I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Again, this is no excuse for poor planning. God has given us intelligence and the ability to reason for a reason, right? If, you, if we're going to take a long cross-country trip, we should probably have enough money for gas and food and plans for where we're going to stay overnight. Jesus' point is not that we wouldn't plan, but that we, would, uh, that we would not be trapped by fear in the midst of making those plans, and we wouldn't be consumed by worry and anxiety about how we're going to take care of ourselves or our families. I think often we, we get so worked up about tomorrow, so stressed out about what, is, uh, what might be, what could be, that we get paralyzed in today, in the moment. We build up in our minds that tomorrow depends on me, that tomorrow or next week or next year and the success that we'll have in the next year depends on ourselves. And so we become trapped by fear and worry. We give ourselves ulcers and heart attacks because we just, we get so worked up about it. The stress level is so high. We destroy our own health. Someone has said um, that fear is much like sand in the engine of life. If you don't know anything about engines, it's a really bad idea to pour sand into an engine, okay? Engines don't run so well. They get bound up with even the least amount of grit. We're not made to function with fear coursing through these engines. A doctor at Johns Hopkins University once said, we do not know why it is that warriors, not warriors, but worriers, <laughs> those who worry, we don't know why worriers die sooner than the non-worriers, but that is a fact. Now, I'm no doctor, but I, I think I know. I think Jesus actually tells us <laughs> Every protein, cell, and neuron in our bodies is made to thrive on faith, not fear. So when we worry, it's like sand in the works. Faith is like oil that keeps the engine running, helping our bodies and souls to thrive and hum like a high-performance engine. So the whole point, we don't have to fall off the path on one side where we arrogantly plan and forget how delicate our lives are and how tenuous our plans. At the same time, we don't have to fall off the other side and get worried and live in fear about the unknown future. 
Because we have faith, God knows our future. God holds it all together, and we can trust that he will be with us in each and every day, taking care of every need that we have. We trust God as we step through the door into 2022. For many years, uh, Christians around the world have prayed what is sometimes called the prayer of good courage. We'll end on this note. The prayer goes like this. Pray with me. Oh God, no, you don't have to repeat. I'll just say it. You just, re- just pray with me. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll continue as we sing the offering hymn. Now now greet the swiftly changing year. It's also an opportunity as we close out 2021, uh, an opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you who has given and sacrificed in a way that supports the work of Faith Lutheran Church. Uh, We have seen over and over and over again the just amazing uh, generosity of the people of faith. You all respond to what God has already given, and you support the work of sharing the gospel with each other and with our community and around the world. So as we consider what we are offering here at the end of the year, let me just say thank you for all of your giving. And now we join in singing. Our offering hymn this evening comes from Lutheran Service Book 896. Now greet the swiftly changing year. Now greet the swiftly changing year with joy and penance sincere. Rejoice, rejoice, with thanks embrace another year of grace. swiftly changing year with joy and penitence sincere rejoice rejoice with thanks embrace another year of grace remember now the son of god and how he shed his infant blood rejoice
Heavenly Father, accept with humble offerings we have brought as a response to your great love and generosity towards us. Receive these gifts with our gratitude for all that you have freely given and help us to trust you in all time and for all we need to sustain our bodies and lives. God is our refuge and strength in all generations. Standing on the doorstep of another year of his grace, let us thank and praise God for all his benefits to us. For the gift of life, for food and drink, for house and home, for all that we need to support this body and life. We thank you, O Lord. For the beauty of your creation, for the gifts of art and music to enrich our worship, for the freedoms we enjoy to worship and serve you as we should. We thank you, O Lord. For those whom you have placed in our lives, our spouses, parents and children, our friends, neighbors, co-workers and colleagues, our mentors, teachers and pastors. We We thank thank you, you, O Lord. For those who have been examples of living a Christ-like life, who have gone before us in faith, who have encouraged us in our walk with you, to the life triumphant during the year now past, for these and all others known to you. We thank thank you, you, O Lord. For the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation, for having called us to faith by the Holy Spirit and adopting us into your family. We thank Thank you, you. O Lord. For the blessings of health and contentment in the year to come, for the strength of faith to trust in all of your promises to love and care for us. We We thank thank you, O Lord. For the talents you give to doctors, nurses, and all those who study various illnesses and continue to look for cures. We We thank thank you, O Lord. Lord, we also remember all those in our ongoing prayers in this time and people that have lost loved ones and are waiting or recovering from surgery and those that we name silently in our hearts. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, confident for the sake of Jesus. You hear and answer us. May we continue to grow spiritually strong, trusting you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord, Heavenly Father, for you have had mercy on us. In your plan for our salvation, you called your servant Mary to bear your only begotten Son, that all who acknowledge in him as their Savior and Lord might not perish, but have eternal life. With thankful hearts we pray. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus. Let us come to the altar of grace and receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ given for the forgiveness of all sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take and drink. This is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And those that are streaming or at home, you may take the body and blood of Christ. We're bold to pray as our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. 
As the congregation prepares for communion this evening, they are reaching out and offering peace be with you. We'd like to at this time take the opportunity and reach out to our radio and internet listeners and say peace be with you. Tonight we're going to commune one side at a time, so we'll invite the pulpit side up first, those who are worshiping with us in-house here, and then we'll follow on the lectern side. Our first communion hymn this, mor- this evening is from Lutheran Service Book 366. It came upon the midnight clear, it came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to all, from heaven's all-gracious King. The world is solemn, stillness lays, to hear the angels sing. I think we can go ahead and sing our next hymn, too. We have plenty of time.
Our next hymn will come from Lutheran Service Book 877. God who made the earth and heaven. God who made the earth and heaven, darkness and the light. You the day for work have given, for rest the night. May your angel guards, guards defend us. Slumbers sweet, your mercy sends us. Holy dreams and holy hopes attend us all through the night. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his for his steadfast, steadfast love, love endures forever. Almighty God, we give you thanks for forgiving our sins, and we ask that we may respond by serving you and loving our neighbor with the same fervent love you have for us. By your grace, Bring us all at last to light eternal in your glorious presence. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is the light of the world. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this evening is from Lutheran Service Book 883. All praise to thee, my God, this night. All praise to thee, my God, this night. For all the blessings of the light.
teach me to